Everywhere you look across the landscapes of digital media, cinema, and television, you see a reference or depiction of the multiverse. It's been saturating pop culture for years now, peaking recently with its pivotal plot devices across the Marvel Cinematic Universe and its sprawling Spider-Man storylines. The mythos behind the multiverse goes much further than comic books and blockbusters. It's a concept that predates modern day technology, an idea that transcends beyond simple science or philosophy. And while it may not be the shining example of the scientific method, there's been enough signs across the universe and curiosity filtering through the atmosphere to create a gigantic fascination for both researchers and the common man for centuries, leaving us all to wonder, do we live in a multiverse? The history of the multiverse theory and parallel worlds can be dated as far back as the birth of atomism in ancient Greece around the 5th century BCE, long before it became the central twist in Donnie Darko or Another Earth. These musings were discovered in archaic writings about the first theories of quantum physics and how all things across Earth were made up of microscopic particles, called atoms, they suggested that with the infinite collision of atomic particles, infinite parallel universes would then be born, albeit less perfect than the current world we inhabit. 2000 years later, in the 3rd century BCE, the seeds of the multiverse discourse were further cultivated by Chrysippus the philosopher, one of the fathers of Stoicism. Chrysippus often hypothesized about humanity's fate and our placement in the universe, a strong supporter of determinism. These beliefs led him to think deeper about the creation and death of the universe and how it might be infinite. He created his own theory about the many worlds conundrum, claiming the universe died and was reborn in cycles. This theory was more about the existence of multiple universes across time, rather than instantaneously, but at least gave scholars more to contemplate. Greek thinkers weren't the only ones to stake claim in questioning a potential multiverse. A few thousand years later, Buddhist philosophers were struggling to explain the initial cause for the birth of the universe, despite theorizing the world as a world of causations. Thus they too believed the universe was made up of many universes parallel to one another, like infinite layers to an onion, and that each layer featured its own eternal births, deaths, and rebirths, similar to Chrysippus. These musings shifted and formed different shapes throughout the next millennia and into the medieval period with various philosophers altering their own opinions of the parallel universe idea based on their religious studies and viewpoints on creationism. One popular sentiment was that the existence of our universe was so because God actualized a perfect version of his creation and that anything parallel to us wouldn't actually exist because God only wanted one creation, demanding gratitude by the masses. This reasoning evolved from the early notion that the universe could only be explained by God because of the perfect nature of the laws of physics. God's influence over many worlds was a hot topic for debate throughout the second millennium and lost most of its credence into the 17th and 18th century as the scientific community dived deeper into astronomy and explored the greater universe. The biggest development of the multiverse theory entered public consciousness in Dublin, Ireland in 1952, when renowned physicist Erwin Schrödinger spoke at a lecture and described the theoretical duality principle known as quantum superposition. The quantum superposition was the result of multiple equations Schrödinger developed over the years that concluded there were various histories of humanity and the universe at large. 
However, these histories were not simply alternative versions of the current state of things, but rather were parallel histories, timelines happening at the same time as our past, present, and future. While Schrodinger's theory wasn't the leading discourse surrounding parallel worlds, he and Einstein definitely kick-started an entirely new generation of like-minded thinkers and researchers who were in search for the answers to the same mystery so many of us had been seeking throughout history, yet may have resided in a single box containing a single cat. Seventeen years before the famous Dublin Lecture, Erwin Schrödinger first scratched the itch as it related to the principle of superpositions and the idea that an atom or photon as part of a quantum system could theoretically exist in various states via various potential outcomes. He was curious about these studies as first proposed by Albert Einstein, Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen who cited the dominant theory known as Copenhagen Interpretation, which stated all quantum systems stay in their superposition until the outside world interacts with said system. Once this interaction occurs, the superpositions all break down and collapse onto one another until the one true position remains in a definite state. These circumstances are so when a quantum system contains more than one particle, separated via a sizable distance. Einstein referred to an unstable keg of gunpowder, explaining that after a period of time, it would enter a state of being both exploded and unexploded. He shared this line of thinking with Schrödinger, who then evolved the test with perhaps one of the most important and well-known thought experiments in the history of quantum mechanics, Schrödinger's cat. Schrödinger explained his experiment from the following excerpt in his 1935 paper, Natural Sciences. A cat is penned up in a steel chamber, along with the following device, which must be secured against direct interference by the cat. In a Geiger counter, there is a tiny bit of radioactive substance, so small that perhaps in the course of the hour, one of the atoms decays, but also with equal probability, perhaps none. If it happens, the counter tube discharges and through a relay releases a hammer which shatters a small flask of hydrocyanic acid. If one has left this entire system to itself for an hour, one would say that the cat still lives if meanwhile no atom has decayed. The PSI function of the entire system would express this by having in it the living and dead cat, pardon the expression, mixed or smeared out in equal parts. It is typical of these cases that an indeterminacy originally restricted to the atomic domain becomes transformed into macroscopic indeterminacy which can then be resolved by direct observation. That prevents us from so naively accepting as valid a blurred model for representing reality. In itself, it would not embody anything unclear or contradictory. There is a difference between a shaky or out of focus photograph and a snapshot of clouds and fog banks. In the end, Schrödinger is posing the question about when a quantum system stops being a superposition and instead becomes a finite definition of one or the other scenarios. Does the cat remember its superposition? Does it remember being both alive and dead? These lingering propositions match up perfectly with the big picture. Is the cat in the box, and is superposition just a small-scale version of Earth and the universe at large? Are we all cats, and the atomic domains around us are constantly collapsing at an infinite rate? The part about the Schrödinger cat that makes it simply a theory is its unobservable component. It's impossible to prove if the cat is both alive and dead, considering observation is what collapses the superposition. How are we to prove there are parallel versions of ourselves if the second we observe our own superposition, 
one of the finite results materialises, and we have no recollection of the observation in the first place. This is a representation known as quantum decoherence. Essentially, the collapse of the superposition doesn't destroy all of the parallel outcomes separate from the observed, finite version, but rather splits them into two timelines, in which neither one can acknowledge the other. So what happens to the timeline we are no longer in observation of? This is where the many worlds interpretation comes into play. Theoretically, the result we do not witness exists in a universe of its own. For example, if the cat survives, it will go about life as it knew, and the versions of ourselves in that scenario also continue to live in a separate plane of existence. We will never be able to interact with this version of events, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The vital question that springs from quantum decoherence is how often do these splits happen? For some, the theory of the multiverse and many worlds means that every single decision and every single effect from a quantum causation results in a split, meaning there are millions upon billions of parallel universes forming every minute. For others, these seemingly infinite splits are just patches throughout the multiverse, which acts as the embodiment of all the many worlds and their parallel brothers and sisters. In other words, the non-observed outcome from the superposition's collapse creates a branch that breaks from our own known universe, but that timeline eventually rejoins with us. This orientation would prevent the multiverse from being so incomprehensibly large it wouldn't make sense, but rather a bundle of strands interconnecting with itself, fulfilling the basic models of string theory, which has been used to describe the multiverse. Outside of experiments here on Earth and the theoretical splits happening all around us, Many wonder if further clues explain the multiverse, or even prove its existence may reside somewhere away from our home planet and out in the cosmos. While proving the multiverse is just as impossible as disproving it, the factor of the unknown might just be what supporters of the multiverse movement need to convince the doubters. We know the observable universe has a point in which we can no longer see what lays ahead, this is called the unobservable universe. We know the universe doesn't simply end, with enough patterns and calculations to know the radiation and matter extends beyond our telescope's eye. In addition, we can study the density and temperature fluctuations at the end of the observable universe to detect the properties of our current universe during its creation. These findings also inform astronomers of the universe's geometry. Astronomy over the years has revealed space doesn't bend either at a positive curve or a negative curve, meaning its shape couldn't be that of a sphere or a saddle respectively. Instead, the total universe is most likely shaped in a flat manner. It doesn't contain empty spaces or bend back over itself or repeat. Astronomers add that if the total universe were to be curved, the diameter would have to be so large, it would be too big to ever actually see anyway. Since we know our universe inflates at a steady rate, quantum physics tells us that other regions of the total universe will also inflate, albeit at slower or faster rates. This means that our part of the universe is not the only region that is growing, and if the rules of quantum mechanics apply to other universes, the multiverse is inevitable. It leaves open the possibility that while our universe has a growing border, it is one of only hundreds, if not millions, or even infinite numbers of universes, all within an unbelievably gargantuan structure. Despite all of the scientific calculations used to determine the likelihood of the multiverse's existence, a lot of folks on Earth are determined to find proof themselves. 
focusing on signs and symbols around our home planet that may give a better look into parallel universes than anything in the cosmos may provide. One long-standing conspiracy faking as proof of the multiverse revolves around the phenomena known today as déjà vu, or the feeling that you are experiencing something for the second time without any concrete memory of it happening in the first place. For millennia, civilizations have equated déjà vu with your brain tapping into a memory belonging to another version of yourself, creating a false experience of an alternative universe. In reality, while déjà vu doesn't have a universally agreed upon explanation, it is predominantly thought to be the brain's reaction to one eye filtering in light at a fraction of a second sooner than the other eye, making one feel as if they are experiencing something a second time without the visual memory to back it up. The other pseudoscientific phenomena long used to explain parallel worlds is known colloquially as the Mandala Effect. The predicament where the majority of the population remembers something one way compared to its actual state of being. The most famous example that gave the phenomena its name originated in South Africa in 2010 when it was thought by thousands of people Nelson Mandela had died in prison during the South African apartheid, even though he actually survived and would go on to serve as the country's president in the late 1990s. False memories have long been attributed to people remembering things from a parallel world or an alternative version of themselves in another universe. However, they are now better understood as psychological phenomena triggered by the activation of associated information and under no circumstances suggest a multiverse exists. If there truly is a multiverse out there and parallel worlds to ours actually exist, the other versions of ourselves are exactly what they are. Other versions. They wield different brains and would be separate entities, making it impossible for us to have shared memories or experiences, no matter how bizarre it may feel. In the end, the multiverse may never be proven. It also may never be disproven. And while it's tempting to try and explain the unexplainable, our best shot at ever inching closer to the multiverse is through the cosmos. A cat in the box or the existence of déjà vu are sadly not our keys. Rather the answers lay up and beyond the stars, like so many other puzzle pieces to our lives, our legacy and our universe total.